What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Today, we got a special guest. We got the Bay Area's finest. Raj, how you feeling? Good, man. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. Can't complain. Appreciate you, you know, working with us and, you know, being a part of Community Voices. I appreciate you having me, man. I appreciate it. Cool. So let's get right into it. Um, take us through your upbringing in the Bay Area and how it's influenced your music. Uh, yeah, so I'm from Berkeley, California, uh, born and raised, and then I moved to Vallejo when I was about 14 or 15, so I've been kind of all over the Bay, but I think it's being from the Bay is such a diverse place. You meet so many different types of people. You're exposed to so much different stuff that I think that kind of becomes the essence of who you are, you know, and I think uh, a lot of that you can hear in my music. I try to put all these different experiences and places I've been, things I've seen in my music, so I think the Bay Area is just a big melting pot and you learn a lot and you grow a lot in the Bay Area. So I really appreciate it. For sure. And uh, one, one sound I've heard was uh, the longer you're in the industry, the, the less you want to be famous. Is that correct? For me personally, or are you saying yeah. in general? Oh, for you personally. Oh yeah, dude, I think bro, fame is weird, dude. Like fame mm-hmm. is, to me is kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to have money but fame is crazy. Like it, it almost turns into like a prison. Like I know people are pretty famous. And it's like, they can't do regular people stuff. They can't go to downtown Oakland. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They can't go out to the functions, to the parties, you know, they get overwhelmed and mob. They can't go to restaurants, but you know, it kind of comes with it. And I think about it in terms of like, if your talent makes you famous and it's a byproduct, the fame is a byproduct, byproduct of the talent, you know, it just comes with it. But I think some people set out to be famous and I think that's kind of weird, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm cool off being a little low key. Yeah, I feel like you know, fame is a, a drug in itself. You For know? sure, you it's a it's a tension at the end of the day. Yeah, it's a, it's a tension. Yeah, especially more so like in the social media age, mm-hmm. and uh, people trying to get famous quick to get put on, want to get their fifteen minutes. So literally, man, yeah. people doing anything. So take us through the work you've been doing just within like the Bay Area community. Um, yeah, we've done just a, a bunch of stuff. We've done, um, we started a series, we started a couple years ago, we couldn't do it last year because of the pandemic and everything, but it's called Good and Proper. And that's where it's kind of like a party, but it's not really a party, it's more like a, a lounge type of thing, kind of more grown and sexy vibes, but the money we get from entry and selling you know, food and merch and drinks, it all goes to like a local organization and we raised uh, I think it was a three or four thousand dollars and Empire matched it and we gave it to Youth Radio um, in Oakland, which is a really dope program supporting like local kids, teaching them music, journalism, writing, all that type of stuff. Um, for Berkeley High School, I donated a tunnel for the for the for the players to run out of, you know, before the games. So mm-hmm. It's a big tunnel with, with a yellow jacket on it. It got the smoke coming out because that was such a big thing for me when I went to Berkeley High. Um, so we donated that. We've done a lot of philanthropy stuff with uh, People's Breakfast Oakland. Um, shout out to Lindsay, shout out Blake. You know, they're constantly really in the field. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like a lot of people talk about being outside. And, you know, it sounds good on social media and everything, but these dudes are really in the field day by day. So we've partnered with them to help them build a, 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 a community garden in West Oakland, you know, in a, in a, in a real food desert. You know, they got goats, they got all type of uh, all type of vegetables and stuff out there that they give to the people. Um, yeah, so we just do, you know, whatever, whatever we can, you know, to help. For sure. And I feel like um, last week we had Jimmy Butler and one of the topics was being present when it comes to like, you know, giving back your philanthropy. So right. I feel like even though people could give money and just call it a day, but being present and being like in the presence of the people you're working for or giving back to. It's just, if not equally, if not more important than just the money, because it, it shows the kids you really care, you're really there with them. And even when the kids just want to, like somebody to listen, well, want somebody to listen to them and someone they aspire to be like, you know, some of the kids may be like you. So they want to be like you, they see what you're doing and that inspires them to do the same. So it's equally as important to, to be there. That's a hundred percent true. I remember one of the things that changed me when I was at Boise, um, I got the opportunity to do uh, the Amazon dude coming up. Hopefully, I ring the doorbell. Uh, <laughs> I got the opportunity to do um, community service in the Dominican Republic at a. Um, it was at a school that needed rebuilding. You know what I'm saying? So we were out there rebuilding the school, providing for kids, and these kids lived in like 
literal houses made of tin and aluminum foil. They were drinking rainwater. Like it was pretty nuts. Um, and that experience just being there was so humbling because it was to the point where we couldn't even use regular water. You know what I'm saying? Like they had a certain amount of water we could use in the shower. Um, you couldn't flush the toilet because it was a shortage of water. You know what I'm saying? If mm-hmm. That's where I learned If I learned a term. If it's uh, yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down because you can't <laughs> overuse the water in real life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, being on the field, de- being in the field definitely you know, it puts you in the place of those people and you really get that lived experience. I feel like people see it from a distance and it's kind of like this foreign thing. But when you're there and you see homeless people and you see people in need, it's like, okay, these are real people, you know what I'm saying? But on the same side of the token, on the other side of the token, I feel like if you can't do that, because everybody's not privileged to have the time and the wherewithal and the energy and the circumstances to be in the field, if there is money, like if you have money, you can give to a certain local organization. I feel like that's powerful too you know what i'm saying because it's a lot of organizations that are actually in the street and they need funding and i feel like they're in every area so i would encourage people if you can't go outside you know covid got people scared to go outside for whatever reason just look up your local organizations in your area it's people that need funding you know what i'm saying money also helps but if you can be there for sure be there definitely just give a lending hand sometimes that's all that's needed yeah no so you have some amazing collaborations under your belt such as you have easy Kehlani, E40, Kenny Beats. So learning from like big industry talent like that, what are some of the learnings you receive from them? And just like little tidbits of wisdom and information. I think the biggest thing that I've learned in everybody that I've met that's quote unquote super famous or successful is that all these people are actually genuinely good people. You know what I'm saying? Like the people who go a long way usually go a long way for a reason because they're they're talented, but they're also good people. You know what I'm saying? So I think the biggest thing that I've learned is just to be a good person and be yourself. And if you can help somebody, help somebody. Like when it comes to the Kalani's and the G's and the Kenny Beats, like for them to work with me, it's kind of like them reaching down. You know, they don't have to work with a dude like me. They're on already. You know what I'm saying? So for them to reach down and put me in certain rooms or give me certain opportunities or give me a feature is a blessing. So I feel like, you know, the biggest thing I've learned is just be genuine and help somebody because you never know where that'll take them. For sure, you know, all you could do, all you could do is just work hard and be nice to people. And I feel like, I mean, that worked, that was, that's worked out for me so far. So, you know. Right, literally. And then lastly, do you have any new music coming out for the fans out there? I'm sure they're wondering. So how's that looking? Yeah, man, we got, so I just, it's funny, I just did an Instagram post saying, you know, I'm always stuck between like, am I about to flood with a lot of music or not put out music to make it more special, you know what I'm saying, to kind of like starve it out. But it's like, I got so much music. We're shooting videos right now. I'm dropping a song probably next month. We're working on a little project. Like, I got so much music coming this year, so I'm excited. Amazing. I'm sure all the fans are looking forward to it. Um, Last question for you, because I know you're busy. So take us through these two foundations you have for us, Family First Foundation and Pro Arts Commons. So Talk to us about, you know, who they are and the kind of work they do. Um, Fan First Foundation is a foundation out of Oakland. Um, I think it was founded by Marcus Peters, who Mm -hmm. plays for the Baltimore Ravens right now. He's a cornerback. Um, He's from Oakland. And they do a lot in the community. They do, you know, the the Christmas uh, gift giveaways. They do the turkey drives. They do pre-COVID. They were doing football camps. But what I think is really clean is that they do these seminars that are kind of like financial seminars where, you can learn about financial literacy or they might do something where you where they learn uh well they'll teach about tech and they'll bring like a black tech person from the bay area to teach kids and all this kind of stuff so i think um you know to me they're doing so much in the community they're doing bowling community bowling events all that kind of stuff to bring camaraderie and positivity to the community but i really connected with it because i come from a football background So to see Marcus Peters, knowing where we came from and seeing how far he made it, being able to give back to the people, to me, was such a big deal. I remember being at Berkeley High playing football before I even got my scholarship offered to Boise State. The biggest thing to me was to see the guys from Cal come down and talk to us and to see the guys in the NFL come down and talk to us from the area because it made it real. So to see him in the field, like you were saying earlier, it makes it real for a lot of people, you know, just for him to be outside, to be doing this. And it also sets an example, like for the people who do make it that far, like you have an obligation and a duty to come back and give in whatever way you see fit. Like, that's my thing. Like, I don't care how you give, just give, you know what I'm saying? Do something Mm -hmm. for the people. So um, I'm really connected with that. 
the other organization, I know it as Endeavors uh, is what I call it, but it's a, a platform for musicians from the area because with COVID, you know, it, it stopped a lot of musicians revenue when it comes to shows. Like a lot of people are getting paid off shows and you can't even perform in these shows. So they've created a platform in Oakland called Endeavors where it's a COVID friendly environment for artists to come and they perform, they can make money. What's crazy is I've went to one of the shows and they have a really elaborate streaming system set up. So you have, you know, 40, 50 people there in a COVID friendly environment that could pay and donate money, but they also stream it live on Twitch for people who can't come to tip and be able to pay you as an artist and you have a platform to, you know, put your music out to the world. And I think it's a really clean idea because it provides this place for artists to still have this revenue when it comes to getting money and it's 100% COVID friendly. And it's in the heart of downtown Oakland. And when you understand what's going on with gentrification and how they're getting all these mom and pop shops out and they're kicking uh, people of color out, for them to do this uh, where they're doing it is very important because it's like one of the last places for real music and art to be done in Oakland. Um, so yeah, that's the other organization we're giving to Endeavors. Cool, amazing. So shout out to Cassie for making this happen. Shout uh, out. I Much feel like love. Cassie should show her face right now so that people can see, you know, who's working behind the scenes to make this. Right. Happen. Much love to her. She didn't have to do this. I really appreciate her. Yeah. And, you know, us at JD Sports and Finish Line, we love the work you're doing. So we want to be able to help you help others. And we want to make a nice donation to both those foundations, the Family First Foundation and the Pro Arts Commons as well, um, just to show our support. And just knowing that those dollars would really like make a real difference to just the community it serves. So definitely. Yeah, I appreciate you guys for doing that, man. Like I said, I appreciate any time somebody of, you know, any status or influence finds a way to give back. So I really appreciate you guys. Yeah, that's the whole purpose of community voices so, to help uplift voices like yourself to bring awareness to different programs that was going on in the community and you know to put our money where our mouth is and really donate and help serve these communities that always, you know, that we just, like all our stores are in, so. You're right. Yeah. That's what's up. So, that's all I got for you. I, I, I'll give you the last words and yeah, that's it. Last words, man. Last uh, words. Be safe, like, be safe, be <laughs> COVID friendly, drink water and hug somebody, man. Much love. Gotta show love. Cool, so I appreciate the time again. Um, thank everybody else for tuning in to Community Voices, and we'll see you next week.